On today's episode, I want to welcome Tommy Jacket. Tommy's a filmmaker, podcast host, storyteller, husband, and father. I first met Tommy about 10 years ago when I was on Dancing with the Stars. We were chatting about how uh, it made us feel pretty old, acknowledging that it was <laughs> that it was that long back. But a lot has transpired since, and it was amazing to catch up with him and have the time to be able to learn about what he's been doing, the journey he's been on, and the many amazing things that he's done in his career. It really was, and the lessons that he's learned, and I learned a huge amount myself from, from this. I'm sure you will too. And just a reminder that the Movie Mind book is now available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com book, and the Movie Mind community is now live. We have all of our courses, behind-the-scenes content, new information going in there all of the time, live events, and many, many more features, and you can find that at moveyourmind.me. Thanks again for supporting the podcast, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Tommy, thank you so much for coming on my podcast, mate. I've been lucky enough to just have a chat to you on your podcast after not speaking to you for a long time, so uh, so glad we get to do it again now on my podcast. So <laughs> thank you, oh, mate, I- for, for making the time. No problem, mate. It's how friends catch up these days through podcasts. So <laughs> if anything, it really it's, is. A mu- it's a much deeper conversation than we would have if I did see you just, you know, at the tan or something in Melbourne. hundred <laughs> percent. I-, I was saying it the other day. I mean, that's the best thing about doing a podcast. You get to connect with either people that you've had in your life or people you've never met from different fields and sit down and have this hyper-focused conversation for up to an hour or often longer about, you know, real things. And we don't yeah. get to do that in day-to-day life. So it's kind of like a cathartic, on a selfish level, it's like, it's almost like <laughs> therapy sometimes doing it. It's like, it's such a great thing to do. I think there's probably a bunch of people who are listening right now that have, you know, had a conversation with their best friend and thought, oh, that would have been a great podcast. But my friend always reminds me, that's actually just how you have a conversation. <laughs> so it's nice <laughs> yeah, that we exactly. are recording this today. It's nice that we are recording this. <laughs> exactly, mate. Thank God we're recording it. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, um, so I guess like for any, any everyone, anyone listening, um, I guess it goes back, what, 10 years maybe when I first met you or longer and uh, you, you actually were... Uh, a fitness trainer in um, an underwear commercial I put together where we were in Federation Square stripping down to my jocks, which I'm glad I'm not doing that anymore. Um, But yeah, yeah, it goes back. I think Dancing with the Stars was maybe when I first met you or around that time. But yeah, it goes, I just feel old. I can't, I can't believe how much time's (laughs) passed since, since then. Well, when I, when I first met you, you're right. I had a personal training business and I, I left school when I was, 17, I, you know, had the um, excuse of being able to leave and work for my dad, who was a landscaper. And subconsciously, I probably knew that I had no intentions of staying on as an apprentice. But, um, you know, you need an exit plan. That's what parents letting their child leave school before the end of year 12. That, that's what you need to go through. And um, I, yeah, I decided to become a personal trainer. At 17, I did the course and got into the industry, but and then I, you know, had my own studio. But that's on this moment where I met you was where I was. I had a deeper passion for media, and mm. I didn't really know where it was other than I wanted to be a presenter, which you know doesn't really give you much understanding of what I was thinking. But I, um, I got into radio and doing some stuff and that's how I met you by doing roving reporting so interviewing backstage at Dancing with the Stars and I did that for um, a local radio station in Melbourne so it's yeah it's funny you know who you meet along the way and and uh, yeah here we are old you know (laughs) old and probably can't dance anymore Nick absolutely can't I couldn't dance when I when I even did it so I definitely can't dance now Um, but yeah, yeah it it is funny the the journeys that we go on, and and I guess for you was that something you sort of um, you knew. I guess you, you were saying there, you know, you knew early on that academically that wasn't the path you wanted to go down, and you sort of wanted to do. There are other things you wanted to do, and I think it, because I think it's really it's a really important thing because I think the schooling system it was the same with me where I um, I knew it wasn't what I, I wanted. I you know I competed in sport and I wanted to do these really hands on activities. Uh, but school didn't really cater to a lot of the things that I wanted. Uh, and I think mm. a lot of people out there don't, um, you know, we don't have that guidance outside unless you fit into the normal sort of categories. Was that something you um, you sort of knew you wanted something else during school? Yeah, I, well, I knew I didn't want to be there. 
and yep. that was that was enough for me and i and i don't think i had any real idea of where i wanted to take it but and that is probably the reason why most parents won't allow their children to not go to school at a mm. young age and that's fair unless you're moving into a trade or something i've got two children now i've got a 5 year old and an 8 month old and thinking about one of them wanting to leave school at an early age it's that would be scary especially if you aren't able to verbalize what your passion is or where you want to go in life which you know serves as a bit of a, a a tool to direct you but i've always had a sense of um doing what i love i i've always found my way to the thing that i really enjoy or i'm super passionate about i know you've you've mentioned you've had ADD. My mum just probably wouldn't let them test for it, but I definitely didn't have the focus in the schooling environment. But I left, and I it, no joke. The day I left, it felt like the weight, like it felt like a weight had come off my back, and yeah. I took control of my own life. I mean, it's it's interesting. I I could articulate the weight f- falling off my shoulders back then, but it, you know now I see it more in a, it probably mm. in a different way, in a more clear. Uh, you know hindsight crystal clear way but it yeah i was a restless kid and it, i was restless probably into my early 20s and i i have i think i've dropped that restlessness because i see how it's pretty impactful on your present state being super restless um and usually that restlessness probably comes from me thinking about what i want for my future and um, and it, and it can cause quite a bit of pain. No, so so many interesting things you've touched on there, and I think that yeah, it is, it really is. It's something that you know I still battle with that restless feeling, and you sort of know deep down that unless you sort of find a way to let it go, it, it's never going to go away, or there's no sort of resolution to it. Uh, mm. What 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 has been you know how how have you found that balance? As I, I mean, has having kids really helped with that and to um has that changed your perspective a lot or was it a combination of things uh that well, that's helped you do that yeah i i think um I, I started meditating uh years ago and i haven't stopped <laughs> so every yeah. day i i you know you work out those things that keep you on the straight and narrow and one of those is meditation but i, I grew up my mum was a yoga teacher and so i sort of you know, and, and a meditation teacher and has been for 45 years, uh, wow. maybe even more. Um, and so maybe the seed was planted there. I remember, you know, doing yoga classes with her or, uh, you know, understanding meditation through her as as good as you can when you're a child. I still don't have the full grasp of it and maybe you never do. But I um, I started a business. So I moved out of um, personal training into media and I and I hosted a radio show in a regional town called Shepparton for two years and that that was you know every day being creative getting up early I'd um I trained myself getting up early by doing the personal training which is which is all early but yeah I I feel like the closer I got to doing the thing that I really thought that I should be doing um the restlessness almost sort of uh left or i kind of maybe was just totally engrossed in the thing that i was doing but sort of fast forward i i got into media production video production podcast production and had a business with my friend and we started a podcast called the daily talk show which we did over a thousand episodes of and that was a um you know a creative project that took you know a lot of time in, it's in the name, the Daily Talk Show, but we had a business that was funding us being able to do that, and the business was in video production, and and it was self-inflicted mental pain doing a project like that. I guess any anything you do in life, a business you've decided to, even if you kind of feel like you've just ended up doing it, it is somewhat of a decision, and. Mm-hmm. It, it usually comes with, you know, some mental pain or, you know, challenges mentally. And I started doing meditation using a, an app called Waking Up by Sam Harris. And yeah, I reckon that 
completely changed my perspective on uh, understanding and, and and how I viewed my mind, how I view even that statement of, you know, I'm restless and what, mm-hmm. what that internal state is and how I see that. And so have I got rid of my restlessness? I think when I'm doing more of what I love and what I feel like I'm meant to be doing, that's when I can feel less restless. But then on the other side of that, um, from meditating I and, and mindfulness, I've observed that it's still there at times, but maybe I just see it and I might let it go. Or I just observe that feeling that maybe once when I was younger actually overtook me and, and was painful in my existence. Yeah, no, I, I think that's such a great point though, because like I think it's probably never completely goes away and you also don't want it to some of that restlessness is what drives us to continue doing what we're doing but uh, i think it's what you were saying it's like that feeling in your gut if you're not doing something that you really if you're going against what you really want to do often we can feel it and the emotion becomes so heightened and that's our subconscious telling us okay you know maybe we're on the wrong path here and when you do go and do the things you want to do then you sort of feel that sense of relief because you're like, well, I'm doing it, you know, mm. rightly or wrongly, I'm doing it. Uh, so really being in tune with that and finding that balance and, um, and yeah, I can totally relate to sort of what you were saying as well with the business and um, you having that to then give you the vehicle to do the other creative projects, you know, that you want to be doing. And I've tried to do the same thing in my own life. And I think it's, again, having that self-awareness, doing things like meditation and finding that balance to work out how can I do this more sustainably long-term? Because I think we can do everything we want to do, but not all at once. And we've got to find, you know, remind ourselves that, you know, life does go for a long time, you know, even though we're mm. we're joking about how old we are now and everything, we're still pretty young, we've got, got plenty of time, yeah. you know? Um, so I think it, it's, yeah, really, really, really important points. And, um, I guess another thing I, you know, wanted to ask you because obviously, you know, you've got two kids now and you're doing, you're managing a lot of different things. How, how do you, I mean, you've probably touched on it with meditation and different things, but how do you, how do you keep balance? How do you maintain that? Is that something you find you have to be really conscious of and just work on, on a daily basis to really keep, keep balance with everything in, that's going on in life? Yeah. Well, um, we've since stopped the daily talk show and I guess the story around, that feeds into the answer and um, yep. my mate Josh and I had that business and the podcast and we wrapped that up last year. So 2021, you know, we, we got through the pandemic and, you know, the uncertainty and the, I guess, the experience everybody had um, throughout that time was, yeah, uncertainty and, and that brings a level of pain to our existence. And so we got through that and got into last year, but we got to a point where we realized that I don't, the version of success that, you know, we were on a path towards wasn't necessarily the one that suited both of us and, you know, partnerships, well, as they say, the, the fastest sinking ship is a partnership, <laughs> but, but we'd, we'd done a lot of work <laughs> on and had a lot of conversation together about all these things that we're speaking about now. And I definitely think that we neglected, this is my, my take on it, neglected um, maybe what individually we wanted. And so mm-hmm. we ended up wrapping up the business. There was five of us at that point full time. And, and, and so wrapping that up was um, hard, but it's led me now to a point, you know, almost a year later that I have more balance now than I did back then. And maybe that's why we needed to stop it and recalibrate on what yeah, success looks like. Is it, and I can only speak for myself, lo- looks like for me. And I'm definitely now in a place where um, there's m- more of a sense of balance in my life than there was when we were desperately trying to create something bigger than ourselves. And for me, yeah, meditation was one that I stuck at and I started probably as a result of the pain of trying to make something work over the years. And and, and then, then I hadn't stopped that. But exercise has mm. always been mm. a part of my life. Like for you, I've heard you talk about that. But 
I, 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 I'd sort of slowed down doing that while I was going through, you know, doing something hard, which it sounds like a silly move. But um, like a lot of us with the pandemic, I wasn't training how I should be. And it's only now that I've been training consistently again and meditating consistently. You sort of see these things that they really have to be non-negotiables in your life. And that's for me. The things for me are eating well, um, I can't say sleep because I've got two children and they might dictate that more than me deciding to have a nice nap. Um, and then meditation and try, you know, all the, all of those things lead me towards balance. But then I know that I can completely go off the rails in that perspective because I've done it before. And so as much as logically, you know, that these are the things that if I don't do them, I'm useless or I'm not the best version of myself. It's, it is still a challenge because thing, things can get in the way, like a pandemic, Nick. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting Move Your Mind. We're expanding the offerings of the organization and we're tailoring everything we do to suit you guys and to try and answer to all of your needs and the questions that you send in. The book is available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com slash book. And we've just released the Move Your Mind community. We've currently got a men's community group, a women's community group, a general group. We're going to be lo loading up other groups. And you can find all of the links at moveyourmind.me. This group's been created based on the needs of what we've heard and learnt throughout running Move Your Mind. And we have live events. We've got courses. We've got huge amounts of value the ability to share information share ideas work in groups together to, to grow and share your learnings to learn about different topics you get email reminders there's a whole lot of features in there we're constantly updating it and we're so excited to share it with you you can find all of the information about it at moveyourmind.me yeah just like that you know one of those pandemic things they can yeah they can yeah. get in the way uh but yeah it's it's so true and i think it's just again you know, being being aware of the things that are good for us and trying our best to to do them regularly, but not not being too hard on ourselves when we do fall out of it. And it's so hard in a pandemic, mm. and when you've got all these changes happening, and uh, you know, we can get so caught up in you know what we're doing day to day and our stresses. And I, I guess ironically, that's the time when we need to be doing things like exercise and meditation, and it's also the time when we are most likely to neglect it, which. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's just having that awareness to and experience to remind our, ourselves of that. But I think, you know, and thank you for sharing about your, your business and the path you're on now. And I think it's a really good message as well that, you know, you can have something that you're, that you're working towards that you thought was the path that you wanted to go down. Um, mm. And letting that go, letting go of that's so hard. It's so difficult at the time and the thought of doing it. But often that's when it actually opens up the doors for something you know better suited to you and that's going to be a more sustainable path which you know you were explaining it sounds like you're you're now on that uh but i think it's for anyone listening it's such an important message because we we should have these you know general goals about what we want to achieve but we don't have to know exactly how we're going to get there and we need to be adaptive in 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 you know how we manage that process because it's it's always going to evolve and change mm. yeah but, absolutely yeah. It's um, a different a different time now for myself. And yeah. last year I had a baby. Well, my wife gave birth, obviously. Um, I, I was there for the ride. And we had a beautiful baby girl named Matilda. And and it, it came... And maybe this is just like rose-coloured glasses on a time and giving, you know, a, a, a great story to something that ended that served moving forward. But my daughter was born just after we'd wrapped up the business, which meant that I could spend heaps more time and be so much more present. And then we went into another lockdown. And so, um, mm. as, as hard as all of that was, I was so much more free, uh, mentally and physically. Cause I, I, you know, I didn't have to go into the office and all of these things. And I've, and I have come out the other side, way better and my relationship with josh my business old business partner is better than it's ever been and yeah. you know the, my family's good and so i always though you know catch myself being hyper optimistic on life and i also just and i just 
think about like is that always positive and i and i've probably come to the conclusion that you can be overly optimistic because you could replace morning's not the right word but replace dealing with pain and dealing with a serious situation with this optimistic it's going to be fine no it's all good like this is all meant to be and and I've done a lot less of that in the in in my present life. Not to say that I look at things <laughs> the opposite to it optimistically, but I I definitely allow myself time to go through the thing that was pretty shitty or sucked, and mm. then I can start giving um, once I've given it space, give it some you know optimism and uh, you know a positive outlook for the future, which is my go-to usually. Yeah, it's interesting, actually, because, yeah, it's one thing I was going to ask, because you seem like you've got such a positive outlook on life and that that attitude. And I guess it's like anything. It's sort of always about finding that, that middle ground, because we obviously don't want to go too far into uh, looking at the negative of everything. That's just not going to mm. not going to help us. But I guess you can sort of go too far on the other side as well and then not deal with some of the underlying sort of things that are going on. So uh it's mm. all all a balancing act isn't it it's sort of um something we just again have to be aware of and and find a way to to bring ourselves back to seeing things for what they are and 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 finding the best way forward um yeah yeah and, give me and time how, you can yeah. you can you can think uh, everything's cool once you've finished the thing or stopped stop the thing um but a year on it's completely different context that you have to feel differently about it. And so, yep. yeah, uh, yeah, I definitely because we were moving so fast and doing so much content and had, you know, things happening all the time, I definitely felt like I'd lost so much momentum in my life. And maybe it was using momentum as a driver, you know, had stopped and then I didn't have momentum. I, I wasn't, and we all stopped, right? 2020, everybody stopped. And I, and maybe this is a, a common feeling that like you were using just that momentum in your daily life as the driver. And then when that's taken away, you realize that the, you know, self-doubt can come up, um, the way you sort of see your own situation. And it, and it makes you maybe just take stock of yourself when you don't have the thing that maybe you thought or maybe was the reason you sort of were moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, very easy to lean into these things as a way to sort of not have to really look at the, you know, what's going on. And I mean, have yeah. you found as well, you've, you know, you've got your new podcast now. Um, have you found at times, cause I know I've found this in my own life with, you know, creative things that I have started out enjoying and then when I've put so much pressure on them, it's sort of that joy goes away. And have you found it hard to find that balance? Has that sort of come back now with your new podcast? You know, not to say that you weren't enjoying it with what you were previously doing, but yeah. have you, you know, that, that sort of balance, has that, has that been something that you've found um, you've had to, to manage as well, in general? Yeah, I think it, there's a fine line between doing a creative project and saying, this doesn't have to do anything. You know, this doesn't have yeah. to make me money. This has, you know, it's all well and good to say that. And the line is there between it needing to and it not needing to. And so I'm currently in the, in the stage of not needing to do anything other than, you know, allow me to connect, learn, educate, all those things that are the essence of why you get into it in the first place or why I did at least. And so, you know, I have a business that does video production, podcast production for brands. And I also have been creating content for myself for years. And mm -hmm. it's nice when it's not necessarily the thing that, you know, I have in my mind is this has to be everything. But then you can also yeah. look at it, right? And go, what about if it is, I mean, like, will it be something if you then apply the, I want this to be the biggest thing ever. And so I don't have the answer because if you then say do something because you love it and if it resonates with people, it will work, 
that that could be true too. And so there's these multiple versions of truth in any of these things. And the creative, you see how there's so much pain in doing creative endeavors is because there's no right path. I guess that's life, right? There's no right path unless it's university, you know, which is seems to be what everyone thinks you need to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what <laughs> that's what we're told anyway. Um yeah. but it's so true and I yeah, it can relate to so much of what you're talking about there where yeah, you can sort of you I mean you want the creative projects to to work but you don't need them to but then it is that question of well, in an ideal world would I like this to blow up and be something massive and okay, yeah. if I did go and just hyper focus and put everything into it would it well maybe but also maybe if i put everything into it it still might not work uh, on that level or you, you literally don't know and it's so, sort of that's the thing that does my head in so much because anything in these creative areas like you just there is that no right or wrong and i can find mm. that kind of exhausting because it's like well okay um how do there's no guideline you've got to almost just follow your gut and do yeah what you're feeling like is right for you at this present time, I guess, is all you can really do. I think the textbook advice or, you know, way path to success is, you know, define your goals, make sure you sort of, you know, your your smart goals, all of these things, right? And as much as they might give you guidance, there's still no certainty there. Um, And I've, you know, been around enough people who have, achieved creative endeavors you know financial success through businesses and and everyone's still having a similar battle within their own Mm -hmm. mind and i guess bring it back to what the where i've landed on all of that stuff now is the thing i'm doing now is probably closer to something that is more purposeful or is aligning with what i really enjoy doing and so that feels like success closer than, you know, when we were making money from the previous podcast, not much, but we still made some money. But um, yeah, it all leads you. It's all the journey to where you are now. But maybe that's my optimism, Nick, looking at my current situation. <laughs> I think it's a bit of both, but no, I think it's a, I think, yeah, I think you're clearly on the, on the right path with it all, but um, you know, and you know, you asked me this, and I'm interested with you. How important to you is meaning and purpose in in what you're doing? Is that one of the biggest driving forces with you know how you're conducting what you do? Yeah, I don't have it as articulate as you do in your book, which uh, I I appreciate, and I I look to people who have their purpose really well articulated and and just because we have done a previous podcast where i interviewed you i do have a note here that says <laughs> to affect global changes in mental health um for me my the I, I i kind of the thread back to me leaving school and getting into personal training me f- moving from personal training into media me m- moving from I guess media into my own business and, you know, creating my own path and having a family and, and connecting with people like the the thread there is purpose and it's an internal purpose, what I'm feeling. So when I left school and I started personal training, I really loved it. I loved it. I'm a guy that couldn't sit still like you, Nick. And I Mm. managed to find the time to put in and learn and educate myself and then grow my skills in communicating and connecting with people and having a crack at running my own business. And then I got into media, which leveraged all of those things that I'd done uh, by following that version of whatever, you know, it felt like my purpose. And then my media career and then getting into video production and spending hours, six, seven hours editing when I couldn't sit still doing any schoolwork or anything like that. And so... Once I sort of hone in on those things that really work for me, I feel like that is closer to my purpose. And and now with, you know, my interests and the things that I love to do, exercise, meditation, connection, have fun, you know, adventure, stories, all of those things are, are threading through all that I'm doing now. And I could easily look forward and think, fuck, there's all these other shit that I want to do or achieve 
and I just know how much that rips me out of this moment and how how I start not enjoying it. I start not enjoying or being ungrateful for where I've actually got to over the years. And, you know, it's like you completely disregard your past sometimes. I'm like, you know, you, you can feel so inadequate if you are just looking forward to bigger, 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 because there is this path that you've gone down. Um, previous, which has led you to where you're now, where, where you are now. My name is Nick Brax, and I'm a storyteller who has dedicated my entire adult life to creating positive conversations around mental health. In recent years, discussions around mental health have become less taboo and entered the mainstream vernacular. I've delivered over 1,000 mental health seminars around the globe, including several TED talks, and I believe we all have a story to tell. In my book, Move Your Mind, I cover my story and stories from people that inspire me, as well as insights from world-leading mental health experts. This book will help you to learn how to recognize mental health issues before they become a problem. Use your personal challenges as motivators, take ownership of your well-being, and create new daily habits that increase happiness and reduce stress. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we talked about earlier about you know comparison and how that can take you out of it which you know i'm interested as well with you how how do you man- manage that but i think um you know even just listening to what you said there to me i'm like wow that's like so cool that you've you've sort of just followed your gut you've done at every given moment the things you've really wanted to do and they've all connected and you've made it work and i mean that if that's not success what is because if you're like you're saying if we're comparing and looking to what other people are doing or how much money other people are making or what someone else is achieving, there's, there's no end to it. Or if we're looking into the future, there's no end. But when you do look at it like that, it's like, well, I mean, you've, you've created this life for yourself following things you wanted to do and you've made it work and you've made a career out of it. Then what, what else can you, you know, it, it gives you gratitude to just talk about it. it. You know, for me listening to it, it gave me gratitude hearing you talk about that and made me think about my own journey. And I don't do that enough because I'm always projecting and looking at other people. <laughs> Is it something that you you have to, you know, really manage? Do you find the comparison sort of um, side of things difficult to manage? Well, um, I'm not an animal. I, I absolutely experience <laughs> all these things. I think if you... Yeah have zero you know comparison in your life if you zero projection i mean ma- maybe you're in a cave meditating um, <laughs> but still even then you're probably in your head thinking about how what everyone else is doing <laughs> but yeah i i think the the connection to meditation and mindfulness and understanding the nature of your own mind and the experience like like i said you know speaking to hundreds of people over the last couple of years five years ten years um in this space we are sort of all having a similar experience and we do battle it's the human experience right it's actually everyone's having it you're having it right now i am too um but it's then what what do we do with that and so when you're when you're wrapped up or eaten up by comparison which i am sometimes and it's usually on social media and uh, like, just think about the moment you're on your phone and you're swiping through something and you just, I mean, for me, I have a moment where I realize that I've completely been lost, lost in my own mind, lost in comparison mindset, lost in projecting, oh, look at that person. Why are they, why are they doing that? Like it is, but I'm more fascinated now and maybe it's from spending the time implementing and creating sort of a consistent mindfulness practice that I, 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 I'm so curious about that. I'm so curious about observing that emotion within me. And that's not putting it aside and saying you don't have it. It's actually almost leaning into it and, and really being mindful of that present emotion. So comparison. And yeah. I definitely still experience it. But I do find that the more I give it attention in that mindful way, it is less impactful. Yeah, yeah, because we can't, you know, we can't avoid falling into these traps or feeling these emotions, but we can observe it and choose how we want to react to it and and then change our behavior accordingly. So I think it's 
a really, really important point you said there. And uh, another question I wanted to ask you, I mean, you've been, you're a storyteller, you've been interviewing people for many, many years. What What's one of the key things you've learned from um, the work you've been doing and from interacting with so many different people and interviewing people and learning about different stories? What's What's a, a th- an important message you think you've learned um, through that? Yeah, well, I, I'm just an average guy, Nick. And what you realize is if you have that mindset and you speak to heaps of people is most people think that of themselves too. Like, I think everyone does, people, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. most people don't think they're special. And maybe they've been able to manage a certain part of their mind differently but then it's not really judgment on that being different. That's just the their context and their story. And so, I mean, we all have doubts, and that human experience is real for all of us. And and I guess that's that's the answer. Seeing how there's a lot of similarities in what we do, you know, um, all all the things I guess I'm speaking to today, like pr- projecting and all the comparison, like. I've maybe understood more uh, more of that deeper or internally from just having countless conversations with people about these things. Um, what else have I learned, Nick? Uh, rapport is real. You know, it takes time to build sometimes. You know, usually there's 10 minutes of a clunky conversation in a podcast at the start. Forgive us. That's just uh, yeah. the journey. But you do, it does, it does build. And um, and honesty feels good is another thing. N- and that's not necessarily honesty about, you know, hey, I did this. But it's honesty with yourself. Like, y- you could see, you know, if you keep something from yourself, like if you try and ignore something, essentially it's like you're lying to yourself. Or if you're lying to a partner, like that that understanding of, you don't get away with it. If you are lying to yourself, you understand it. And so being honest and open about things doesn't mean you have to go overboard and and say absolutely everything on your mind. But, you know, yeah, it's um, your mind knows. (laughs) If you're thinking it, you can't just ignore that. (laughs) Exactly. You might, you know, you might feel like you're getting away with it, but you're actually disservicing yourself more than more than anyone if you do it you know it's like it's going to yeah. catch up with you it's not going to be a good outcome but I, I i couldn't agree with you more with what you're saying with everyone think has their own issues their own vulnerabilities their own worries and i think by that's what i love most about about podcasting and interviewing people it you know that's what you learn and, and everyone's got their own story and i think people learn that and we need more of that in the world people need to learn the, we need to humanize people because we've got so much crap out there with social media and these projected images and these, you know, false realities. And it's it's really important that we learn that actually everyone's just on their own journey. We're all we're all trying to do our best. We're all trying to find our own way. Um, and there's no right or wrong. And we're all just you know having a crack at all of this. So I think that's what you learn from it, and it's a really important message. So um, yeah. Yeah, really, really appreciate everything you've you've shared on here. Um, we have sort of five closing questions we finish every podcast with. Um, before I go into that, um, if people want to learn, if our listeners want to learn more about you, listen to your podcast, um, look up what you're doing. Where, where's the best place to send them? I'll put it in the in the show notes as well. Uh, but yeah, wh- what's the best place for them to go? Well, my podcast is called Tom Versation. And you can find that anywhere podcasts are. And my website to my business, vidpod.com.au. That's um, where I help brands and businesses communicate through vid- video and podcast production. And um, I'm, so, I'm sure if you just type my name into you, uh, Google, I will come up. I'm a real pest on the internet, to be honest. <laughs> there you go. Type in Tommy Jacket and you'll find it all. Yeah. But we'll, we'll put all the links in there and... I mean, I know I get a lot of people asking about, you know, pot, doing their own podcast and where can they go. So anyone listening, if you want to, if you want to start a podcast or look into doing something in that area, go go to Tommy. He's he's good at what he does. Um, so thanks, Nick. So, um, anyway, so these are the, the these can be sort of short answers or whatever comes to mind, but these are yeah five questions we finish each episode with. 
So the first one is, what is the your best childhood memory that comes to mind? I, lo- I have this place um, in Shoreham. So it's called uh, Flinders, but the sh- it's Shoreham Beach where I used to go as a child with my family and would surf and, you know, just fond memories of, um, uh, you know, holidays and surfing with dad and we used to always eat peanut butter sandwiches after we would go surfing and as an adult now if I go on the sea water I crave a peanut butter sandwich after that because of the memories of going to um you know Shoreham Beach I love that I love that I yeah I love those kind of memories yeah it's so good it's amazing how like how linked it is to you know it can come back in an instant when you're in that situation oh absolutely and I took my son there you know, not that I'm trying to turn him into me. Um, that's not what parents do, do they? Um, I took him <laughs> no, there and not. I took some peanut butter sandwiches. And, mate, he loved it. He loved it. That's beautiful. So... That's, that's so nice, yeah. That's that's pretty cool to be able to, you know, pass on that experience to, to your kid. It's so nice. Yeah. Um, what would you What would you say is one of the biggest burdens on mental health currently in society today? The biggest burden on mental health society today, I think it's definitely around uh, education for young people. I feel like maybe it sort of drops off and when you get into school, I know for myself, I can't remember ever learning about my own mind and I'm sure it's, yeah, there, we spoke earlier in the conversation you mentioned that there are people really working to make it a thing but it's a never-ending journey your mental health like it it doesn't stop it's not like you get to some point where you're just fixed or what even is fixed you just it is the experience of life dealing with your emotions on a day-to-day basis and so perhaps that's that's uh where the focus should be yeah, and that, that message, I think, is so important because I think a lot of people, because it's intangible, people look at mental health and think, well, maybe if if I'm struggling, I'll just be reactive, get the help I need, and then I'll get on top of it and I'll be okay. Uh, it's not how it works. It's like saying I want to get into exercise and you know lose 10 kilograms. I'm going to eat well. I'm going to train. I'm going to you know get that result. Then I'll stop and it'll be all fine. It's sort of, it's there's no end point. So it's, we've got to yeah. practice these things forever that's the only way we can you know get the result or maintain it yeah uh what is your personal definition of happiness uh i know when i feel happier happiest and the definition of that uh yeah it's a hard one because it's a it's a real um experience that you go through and 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 i guess I haven't been pursuing happiness in my life. I, I, I feel like I haven't had that as a driver um, because if you're pursuing it, sometimes it's, you know, it can feel really elusive and you can't arrive there. And so through meditation and mindfulness, there are times where I'm peaceful uh, and much less noise is happening. And you could say that's happiness but it doesn't necessarily connect to the happiness you feel after a gym session when the endorphins are pumping and you're having a physiological response to the thing you just did where you feel really happy. And so maybe my definition of happiness has changed and I can't really articulate it, Nick, but I just know that it might not be what I thought it once was or it isn't just as singular as I may, I may have thought it was like that feeling, you know, holy shit, I feel good. You know, like maybe it isn't necessarily always that there is other versions of happiness, stillness, peacefulness, mindfulness can lead you there. Um, as well as all those sort of really nice feelings you get out of happiness. Yeah. No, I think you've articulated it super well there and you know it's not it's not the highs or the lows because you can get addicted to those you can you've got to just accept those but i think what you said which i haven't heard anyone else say which i really love i think the definition is almost not trying to chase happiness 
that's mm. then because then that's inner peace you know you're not like i don't i'm not longing for all these other things if i'm not chasing it then i've got permission to be okay right now which i, I love that definition of it so i think that's a, a really great answer um so i've got two more here um yeah. what 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 are you most afraid of god i mean not spiders I saw a, saw a um, <laughs> red back spider the other day I uh, used to have a snake as a kid, so definitely not that. It's probably, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about this recently, just about fear, like as if you don't have a fear. It might not be what other people think, you know, or, you know, the common fears, but definitely a fear. Um, this okay, So fear of someone close to me in my life committing suicide. I've had a heap of people in my life commit suicide. And I know when I think about it for family members, fuck, that makes me scared. Yeah. That's terrifying. There's not nothing, you know, scarier. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, final one. We'll end on a, a more positive note here. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, are you, what are you most proud of? Uh, dude, having kids is, um, is pretty good. But I think that's, maybe that's just such a common yeah. answer for parents. It, but there is something about seeing a human, especially a kid eating a peanut butter sandwich at your, at your surf spot as a kid. You know, you're proud of that. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, so maybe that's externally what I'm proud of, you know, so, some, something that isn't me. But I think I'm proud that I've kept a consistent mindfulness and meditation practice for nearly three years. I haven't missed a day. And... It's, um, I care less about the daily thing. Like I was obsessed about that for a while. Um, yeah. but now I just don't not do it, which is, which is cool. It just isn't something that I don't not do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, mate, for being so open and chatting to me. And it's been so great to reconnect. And I'm sure our listeners are going to get a huge amount of value out of everything you've talked about. So yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. And I will say, listen to Tom Versation because there's a great conversation with Nick Brax that you'll love to. I just had to put that in there for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Please jump on there and, and look up all, go through all the links, listen to us chat on, on Tom Versation. And uh, yeah, thank you again, mate. I appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Thanks to Tommy Jacket for joining me today for Move Your Mind. And just a reminder that the Movie Mind book is now available globally. You can find all the links at nickbrax.com slash book. And the Movie Mind community is also available. All you have to do is go to movieyourmind.me. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. We really do appreciate it. We have some really exciting things coming up with Movie Mind. And I just can't wait to share it with you all soon. So once again, thank you. And I'll see you all next week.